Uh, there's a few subtleties and interesting things. This Mathematica, there's two files. They're already up. Um, they're already up on the, in the Dropbox. Whoops, I didn't want to do that. And I just want to take you through what's in them. So the first thing is notice right here at the beginning, life is pretty easy for most standard differential equations. You just get to use d-solve. What are the things you have to know? Um, the prime is a great way to define your equation. It makes it nice and clean. You can actually use the derivatives. You can use the other forms. But when you're doing differential equations, you want to do that. The bracket tells you you're doing a function. And the, what's inside the bracket is the variable that the prime is going to refer to. When you use d-solve, you need to tell it y of x is what I'm solving for and x is the variable. And then it'll give you, just like it always does, a rule for y of x. And it's in a double bracket because it might have had more than one solution. So it's a list of solutions. Now, and it gives you the constants of integration using C1, C2. If it was third order, there would be a C3. Fourth order is C4. If you do this, you get out a rule that's a function. Now, I don't end up, there's been very few times in my Mathematica career I've had to use the function command to define functions. There are a few rare places it can be helpful. This is what I consider kind of an advanced idea. I always just make sure I do it that way so I get out my y of x. Now, how do you usually use it? Ironically, what I like to do is if I'm going to do much with my solution, I generally turn it into an actual expression. What does that mean? So my pattern that I want to match is y bracket of x. My rule is when I solve something is that y bracket of x is going to go to whatever is the expression on the right-hand side. And I use flatten to get rid of one of the brackets so the thing I get out is not a list. So general solution now just equals this stuff. And it's not necessarily a function of x, b, y. It's just a normal mathematical expression. It's just like I typed in general solution equals all of this. And now I can do a lot of things with it. I can plot it easily. I mean, you can do a lot of these with the y of x formulation, but I just find this an easier, if I'm going to use my solution to do stuff, to do this step with it. That's, again, what you're comfortable with in Mathematica will determine a lot what you do with it. Now, you have your two constants of integration. You can just go ahead, if you know what they are for some situation, and replace them. So, Hopefully by now I've done this enough and you've maybe used it enough, but you really, really, the power of Mathematica, one of its great powers, comes from this ability to use slash dot and, and do rules and replacements without letting things be equal something. So you really want to get comfortable with that. So I've let C1 and C2 be 1 and minus 1, and I get a particular solution. Now, that was just assuming I knew what they were. Let's suppose... I want to solve for them. Okay. Now, one thing you might be doing is you say, okay, I know at x equals 0, my solution 0. So let's solve for c1 and c2 with that condition. Well, of course, that condition isn't unique. That's the case c2 is the same as minus c1, which is kind of what I did up there. I let 1 and minus 1. Okay, great. What do we usually do when we have differential equations with two constants? We, we set what? The initial condition for y and y prime is a common one. The other thing is if, it's, if you're really thinking of a space, you might set a condition of y of x is 0 and y of x at 1 is something, for instance. But let's do y and y prime. So. I can take the derivative of my solution with respect to x, perfectly fine, because it's just a normal mathematical thing. Using the derivative command, I can then solve for my coefficients 
by solving the solution at x equals 0 is 0, and the derivative of the solution at x equals 0 is 1. Now, uh, I could pick 0 here, but if the derivative, think of an oscillator. If the velocity and position are both 0, does it move anywhere? No, so that wouldn't be a very interesting one. So notice the syntax, right? I've got my solution. I'm letting x go to 0, and then I'm setting that whole thing equal to 0. Um, and notice it gets me coefficients in terms of b and omega. It's perfectly happy to do that. It doesn't complain. Those are perfectly fine things to solve in terms of. I can then notice I flattened it because I'm looking ahead. I'm going to use slash dot and plug it back into my general solution to get a particular solution. And there I have it. And now I could plug in particular values of b and omega and look at things. And you might say, well, why did you do all that work? Because I can do it in one step with dsolve. <laughs> right? What's the syntax? Just like solve can solve multiple equations, dsolve can solve coupled equations. What are the coupled equations I want to solve? My differential equation equal to 0, y at 0 equal to 0, and y prime of 0 equal to 1. And then I'm solving for y of x and x, and I get it out. And you can see those are exactly the same. There's just this one came out in a slightly different form than that one. That is just the basics. That is something I expect everyone to be able to do kind of after with this class and stuff. So in any of the differential equation stuff, you can test doing this. There are some weird things that can happen. So if I did that, I get 0. Now, what I'm doing here, of course, is solving the case of something oscillating where I'm fixing two points. Now, obviously, if I'm fixing two points, 0 is a solution. But what else do we know? If the solution is truly oscillatory, what's another way I can get y of 0 and y1 of 0 to be 0? If I put a periodic, like a sine wave in there or something. Mathematica doesn't care about that. It's not going to know that you're looking for that. So there are important physics cases where if you just blindly put in the boundary conditions, you'll get 0. And so you really need to solve the general case and apply the boundary conditions step by step afterwards. And that's why I showed you that, you know, the long way of using replacements and solves and pulling things out. So there are times where you still have to be smart about the physics and kind of do it by hand. And in fact, most of the time in quantum mechanics, the reason you're getting interesting values is because it's an eigenvalue, eigenvector situation, and you're getting values for the solution that are special, so they're not ones Mathematica is going to find in one step with the two boundary conditions. You're going to have to do it by hand. So that's just a warning. Now let's move into some slightly more, oh no, this is still the basic stuff. Um, one thing, oh shoot, I changed the solution to zero. So one thing to do, keep in mind that when you plot, I can't plot a function with b's and omegas in it. You have to give it a number. So there's a frequency of 2 and a damping of 1. And it does what we expect an oscillating sine wave to do as it damps. Now, one of the things that's really fun is to try a bunch of parameters. And now I could cut and paste that plot multiple times, but it is really useful to learn about manipulate if you want to check things. Fairly simple syntax. There's the command you want to do. So I want to plot something. You can actually put a series of commands with semicolons. You can make it do more than one thing. It's almost like writing a function. So you can put multiple steps in here. But I want to plot. Notice I want to plot the solution with b and omega uh, replaced with different things. So this is a place where I need to kind of do that two levels of variables. I'm going to replace b and omega with i and j, and i and j are the things I'm going to manipulate. So then it's comma bracket i, comma bracket j, and the range of values I want for i and j. 
You can get really fancy. You can stick in an initial value. You can step in steps that it goes in. You can put labels on everything. You can move where it goes. You can display different things. The help on manipulate is pretty good. So it's not much, I mean, it's not that hard to do on your own. And to just do the basic thing like this is very straightforward. And what it allows you to do now is explore the parameter range. So there is no damping and my lowest value of J of 1. And notice that J of 1 with, with the way I've defined things, it comes to 2 pi, basically, when it repeats. Right? So it has one cycle in omega from 0 to 2 pi. Um, but now if I play with it, that just increases the frequencies. And that just increases the damping. And if I go back, eventually, there's a place where it gets upset because I've made that term zero. Whoops. And so it got really upset at me because it did not like making it zero. And there you can look at behavior like critically damped, over damped, under damped, and get a sense for those terms. Now, that's, that really is the straightforward stuff. I want to show you um, two more complicated things. I mentioned it briefly in an earlier lecture at the beginning with Mathematica, but now I want to come back to it. Um, this is just to make sure I didn't change my equation. It's really powerful in Mathematica to be able to guess solutions and see if they're right, but notice the problem. If I'm going to guess e to the alpha x for my differential equation, what did it not do? It didn't take the derivatives, right? I'm, I'm telling it y of x is this, and it replaced it for y of x, but it didn't know to do the derivatives because it doesn't know it's a function. And you really need to tell it that. And there's two ways to do it. You can use the function command, but the more compact and common way is this advanced idea of pure functions. And there may be a couple other places it comes up. But the syntax is a little strange and it's hard to get used to. The syntax involves an ampersand to take the place of the variable. And no, wait, that's not the ampersand. The pound sign to do the variable and an ampersand to tell you that you've had a pure function. So this ampersand is telling me that the e to the alpha x is a function. And it's a function of whatever I want to stick here. And so I'm replacing it y is now going to be replaced with this function. And notice I don't use y bracket of x. I really do use y. And Mathematica knows when it sees the y bracket of x to make the translation. And now it does all the derivatives it needs to do. You can also do this by doing y bracket of x goes to function and use the function command, just like it gave us a solution. So, and these, this is done pretty well in the Mathematica handbook in the section on differential equations, um, and it shows up a lot. But now we can then do what we want, is go through and divide by e to the x. And this is the other, the last thing I want to kind of show you. If I just divide by e to the x, Mathematica gives me e to the minus x alpha times everything. There's a lot of times it doesn't like do the division for you. Um, now, in this particular case, simplify works. A lot of times you have an equation, you want to divide both sides of the equation by e to the x. Simplify won't work there. There's a really cool mathematic of functions. There's two of them that go together, map and thread, that allow you to basically do something term by term in your expression. So you use it for sums, you use it for equations, and you use it for lists. A lot of time for lists, you don't need to use it because if I do like the square root of a list, it takes the square root of each term automatically. But if I'm doing something more complicated, I'll need to use this. And notice what the structure is. It's this pure function structure again. Map is going to the, amp, the, the pound sign is whatever the input is to that variable. And then it's going to divide it by that and the ampersand tells me to end it. What is the input? The input is each term in an equation. 
So what map does, you want to think literally of it, of it mapping term by term, the function in the left, it plugs into the pound sign each term from the expression on the, on the right input. So term by term, it divides by e to the x, e to the alpha x, and it does it correctly. And then you can solve the way we've done things in the past, this algebraic equation, and notice to get the standard forms. Again, in MAP, if you look in the Mathematical Handbook section under pattern matching, there's a really good description of MAP. I'll probably try and find a few other examples in the rest of the course to use MAP because it's such a powerful thing for you to learn going forward. It's just one of those tools for manipulating expressions. It's like all those tricks you learn to do algebra by hand, MAP and thread, when simplify doesn't get it where you want and you don't want to cut and paste every term and rearrange it the way you want, often map or thread is the function you want to do the matching. And so you have to start thinking in terms of these variables, what goes into the pound sign and how do I do the rearranging. So sorry I went a few minutes late today, but those mathematics file will be up there. <laughs>